Welcome back everyone, I'm Zell, and today we're going to look, get a look at what's inside the Wii Vapor. Alright guys, first thing, I made a huge mistake on the Vapor. I read some copy wrong, and this pocket clip is titanium. I was, uh, you know, I was questioning it whenever I first read it, and I, hmm, I was just wrong. Count that one on me, guys. This dude is titanium. Uh, it is black, I believe, on all the knives. And our backspacer is carbon fiber. We're going to get a look at that, see what kind of carbon fiber we've got back in there as we go along here. So let's get her opened up and let's get to it. Since this is a Wii knife with torque screws, all we need is our T8 from Weehaw. And I think... Uh, well, depending on how they did the sleeves, we may only need one. We may need two of them. So let's get pivot loosened up here. Very nice. Came out of there nice and easy. And we are going to take the pocket clip off this time. We normally don't do that. But since this is a reversible pocket clip, I want to get a look at the screws and how those screws are set up. Whether we've got different links or you know, just in general how they pulled this off and you now as you can see and we'll get a look here in just a minute whenever we get to the body screws on how tight these titanium torque screws <clears throat> excuse me that we uses are before we get into the body let's stick that in there and get the wee up there where you can see it and you can see how tight those screws are uh wee is machining their own and they're doing uh, just a bang up job <clears throat> that seems to be the deal whenever these companies do their own screws. They take some more time and more care with it. Uh, obviously, Wii's not the only one. I believe Riot does the same thing. We all know that Hinderer does. And it's, uh, it's kind of refreshing to see a company take that much care in the final product. And there we go. All the body screws are out. Let's see if this thing's going to come apart. So we had two body screws, pivot screw, and we took the two screws out for the pocket clip, which I need to set those aside so I don't get them goofed up with the rest of the screws. We'll look at those here in just a minute. And pff, there it goes, man. Just pops apart just like any other Wii knife. Just beautiful. And internally, we are the same as the full-size Wii knives. Uh, stop pins in there pretty tight. We're going to leave that in. And that, man, that... Nope, there it comes. That pivot is in there tight as well. We do have, and this is something I don't always point out on the Wii knives, and I probably should. See that little ledge right there? That is how you line up your pivot and how the pivot captures itself so it doesn't spin on you and as we can see down in there kind of they've got that ridge milled in here and that is the other side the piece that keeps everything together and it's just man it's just a beautiful thing how thoughtful the design not just of we but of many of the current knives are they really put some time into the engineering and thinking behind simple stuff. You know, we had the D-shaped pivots. We went from free spinning. We had some D-shapes. Now we have this system that Wii's using. We have the hex-shaped pivots that uh, ZT likes to use. And it's all just a beautiful thing to see these things evolve. And uh, there is our carbon fiber backspacer. No doubt that it's carbon fiber, as you can see there. And... See if we can get that guy to come loose. It's got a pin through it, so I'm going to be very careful, and I may not take this guy out because, well, I'll tell you what. We'll take the screws out of it because I do want to see exactly what they've done here. There's one screw, and we got another one down here. Oh, there it comes. And it looks like all of our screws... Are the same size. Let's see if we can get this guy to come up. I will be very careful because we are dealing with carbon fiber and as we know carbon fiber as much of a wonderful material as it is 
it can sometimes be brittle so i don't want to didn't want to you know break it or something that would be awful but there you go we have stainless sleeves going through the carbon fiber holding the screws in and uh we have the little hook there whenever you set it down in there the little hook goes around the lanyard hole so you've got a semi-tube lanyard hole uh, very nicely done lose that pin if i'm not careful Uh, nicely machined out, got some light jumping on the back of it, nothing that's going to bite at you very hard. It's been smooth pretty good, if I can get the camera. There we go. Very nice. I. It's just like any other Wii knife I've taken apart. <sighs> Love the design or hate the design on the Wii knives. Internally, they are always done extremely well. Now, some of you were concerned that this uh, inlay was the over travel stop the over travel stop is right there goes up right against the frame not against the carbon fiber the carbon fiber is safe so the lock bar is not going to be pushing your should not be pushing your carbon fiber out very nice and there's a good look at that inlay uh, we has went with a little bit different direction this time than what they did with the zephyr if you get a good look at that, we have just a little bit of raise all the way around. And I think that is to mitigate the minor issue they had with a handful of Zephyrs. And the one that we had in here for review was like that. The one that Shabazz, that was the same knife that Shabazz had, where there was a little bit of a sharp lift at this end of the knife. Well, they have rounded all those edges off just a little bit and left it just a little bit proud of your scale comes out looking well comes out looking beautiful as always uh stop pin we're not going to pull that guy out because they've really got that guy in tight we will get our zebra print microfiber cloth out here because uh, we're not going to stick this one in the ultrasonic i don't think it really needs that level of cleaning just get all the goop out of it pull these out I don't know why I always try to go from the back side on these. May have to, though. There we go. There's one out. And there's... Come on out of there, you little rat. There it is. Nicely machined down in there. Got a little bit of oil in it. We'll clean that up. There we go. Everything's good to go. One thing we can see here is that we is continuing. They started this a while back uh, before the Torx screws started to make it to most of the knives. But they are putting just a little bit of Loctite on there. Do these screws really need Loctite? I'm not sure. I don't think your body screws really do. Pivot screws to keep alignment up and stuff, you may need some, but uh, the screws fit the threads and these knives just amazingly well. They, like Rake and like uh, Hinderer and some others, they match up the screws with the threads in just an amazing fashion. Let's get this stuff cleaned up. We'll get the... Uh, thread locker or vibra tie it on there and we'll get this thing back together and yes i'm using straight alcohol this time you guys gave me so much crap about using acetone somebody out there that warns me every time even though i say it they still warn me that using acetone could be a problem i'm well aware of that guys i really really am and i try to let you guys know that i'm aware of it may not every time but i am uh, I'm just very, well, okay, so I'm somewhat careful with the acetone. You do want to keep the acetone away from your carbon fiber. You don't want to dry that stuff out. And, uh, you know, over time, it is a resin-based material. Over time, it will dry out, if you're especially if you're using that kind of chemical to uh, clean it with. And the coatings, these DLC coatings on these blades, they will definitely... Uh, give you problems if you get something like acetone on them that 
you know, dries them out rapidly. I learned that a long time ago with a Spyderco knife that now has kind of a dull gray blade instead of a nice shiny black blade, or not shiny, but nice bright black blade like it should. Eh, you know, live and learn. Those are good enough. We'll get these pocket clip screws that I stuck way up here. Pocket clip screws had a little more stuff on them. Yeah, a little hard to see that there, but they did. They had a little more uh, thread locker on them than the rest of the screws. Let's see what we get. There we go. I think that's good enough. And I do want to take this. This is the pocket clip screw. This is a body screw. And I want to see if we've got the same length screw. And we do. That's a beautiful thing. That means that uh, all the screws are interchangeable in this knife. In case you do something that, uh, you know, kind of silly and you get the knife taken apart and you mix all the screws up, which I have ab absolutely done. So anyhow, we're going to dope up all the screws and then we'll get it back together. I say dope up. We're going to put Vibratite on them if I can get the lid off the Vibratite. There's one. And one, what, two more after that one. I'm still gonna set the pocket clip screws over here separate. Yeah, uh, cause I just wanna make sure they go back in the right place. Just in case I miss something on the screw length. Oh, pivot screw. All right, there we go. And you guys know the deal. Be right back for you. It's going to take 30 minutes for me while I wait for that Vibratite to cure. So be back with you in a minute. All right, guys, here we go. We've got our non-lock bar side. We are going to stick our backing washer down in there. And uh, getting it back together, we're going to use uh, what we always use, 10-weight nano oil. People are going to ask, is there some reason you use nano oil? Is it better than everything else? Uh, you know, no, it's not. Is it convenient? Is it really neat that it comes in different weights? Uh, yeah, that's what's neat about the nano oil. And we're putting that bearing in face up or closed side up to hide that open side down in the counter bore that we have in the handles. We'll drop our other one in here. Or actually, we may not. I have to see how we're going to put this thing together because now we need a pivot. And here we go. Be sure to get your pivot lined up correctly. That little step on the back side of the Wii logo screw. And this one fits in really, really tight. Nice and flush. Looks really, really good. Uh, I know some of you don't like that Wii Logo Pivot. You know what? I don't care. I like the Wii Logo Pivots, and I like many of the little small touches that many knife makers do to get their logos on knives in such a way that they're not imposing, that they're not, you know, sticking up there and in your face. And that's what we has done here, and I applaud that. They've got that pivot on there, uh, and it's really cool, but it's not like, oh, hey, look at me. Because their logo that they've chosen is not a overdone, overcooked, big-in-your-face thing. And this knife had all the same uh, length screws, so... We don't have to worry about uh, finding the right length screw for the right hole, which is freaking fabulous. I love it whenever they can come together like that. 
doesn't always happen. Design sometimes dictates that you have different length screws, different size screws, and all that kind of thing. But it's always cool whenever you can get one out there that has the same screw size almost everywhere. All right, so here we go. We are back together there, and we need a washer or a bearing there. Need some tin weight oil in there. And then we need a drop of 85 for that detent ball hole. One note on this little knife. You notice how we has decided to uh, black the entire blade. Well, that causes one thing whenever you first get the knife. You see how the detent track is wearing in there? Uh, whenever you first get this knife, the detent track is going to be just a little bit gritty and you're going to have to work the knife to get that stuff smoothed out. Now, once it's smoothed out, you know, it's good to go. But that's one, uh, I don't know if you call it an issue, but it's one thing to be aware of. That's a good way to say it if you're looking at getting one of these vapors. And there we go. We have put the bearing on there. We put it on open side of the race up this time because we're going into the counter bore here. We're going to put the backing washer over it and see if we can get our handle to pop down on there. And, you know, just like any good knife in 2018, we're in 18 now, uh, it pops down on there just like it should. You know, and that, guys, is a beautiful thing. I am so thankful for that, that even the uh, much cheaper end of knives, whenever we get down to those $30 and $40 knives, even most of those are going together like this now. And that is just super beautiful to me. It means that they're watching their machining tolerances. They're changing out tooling when it needs to be. They're not just slapping knives out there, even if we're at the uh, $40 price point. Let's get these two body screws back in. And, oh, there we go. Get in there. Yeah, get in there. Come on. Down in the hole. There we go. I'm just putting these things together snug. I'm not trying to over torque them or anything. You know, we may not even be talking quite inch pounds here, but probably, probably a handful of inch pounds. Because all you want is this stuff to be snug and let the thread locker do its job. You don't want to be gorilla torquing anything on your knife. And uh, there we got the knife back together. We are centered up. Action's good. Maybe a little tight on the pivot. And that is one thing I have noticed about these smaller knives from Wii. The uh, pivot does have a marginal amount of uh, aligning capability and action capability that in most of the larger Wii knives doesn't have. You just snug it down and there you go. But we're dealing with much, much lighter blade stock on these knives. So, you know, that's part of it. And we're going to set this one up for tip-up right-hand carry, I think. So we need to stick our screws down in there and our pocket clip. Titanium, remember, guys, I goofed that up. Sorry. But down in our pocket clip and... Tighten it back down. And guys, that's really all there is to it. That is what's inside and how to get there for the Wii Vapor. And man, is it a looker. You know, I don't know. I think I would like to have one of these for my own personal collection. Uh, probably in this blue. I think I'd probably get the satin blade, but man, that is one hot-looking blue, and it really does look good with the black blade. Just my preference for this knife would be to have the satin blade because I'd use it. Anyhow, guys, that's been what's inside the Wii Vapor. We'll get her finished cleaned up and put her back into use because 
you know, I'm probably not going to carry these for primary carry, but as a secondary knife, you bet all these little wees are going to be in my pocket. You guys have a great day, and I will see you next time.